Boston Dynamics new robot is incredible. Here's why. Today, I am going to talk about Boston Dynamics new robot, it can run, jump, and even do flips. If you're interested in the future of robotics, then you need to watch the whole video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy it. The robot can operate both outside and inside buildings, and it has whole body dynamic balancing. Atlas can detect obstacles and navigate rough terrain autonomously or through teleoperation. The robot is both electrically and hydraulically powered. Atlas hardware saves weight and space by utilizing 3D printing, resulting in a compact robot with a high strength-to-weight ratio and a large workspace. Atlas can manipulate objects in their environment and travel on rough terrain thanks to stereo vision, range sensing, and other sensors. Atlas maintains its balance even when jostled or pushed. The robot weighs 80 kilograms and is 1.8 meters high. Overview Many humanoid applications can be broken down into two stages of control, a behavior-level controller that outputs high-level commands and a low-level controller that generates joint commands. The low-level controller must consider full-body kinematics and dynamics to fully utilize the workspace and be robust to external perturbations. Inverse kinematics with stiff joint position tracking is a popular method for controlling humanoid robots. Inverse dynamics-based approaches, on the other hand, have gained popularity by providing compliant motions and robustness to external perturbations. However, the performance of such methods is heavily reliant on high-quality dynamic models, which are frequently extremely difficult to create for a physical robot. Approaches based on inverse kinematics only require kinematic models, which are much easier to generate in practice. Control in the DARPA Robotics Challenge, the proposed full-body controller is tested on Boston Dynamics Atlas robot. Atlas is equipped with 28 hydraulic actuators, 6 for each leg and arm, 3 for the back joints, and 1 for the neck pitch. Our controllers for rough terrain walking, ladder climbing, and full-body manipulation are all designed for it. A. Walking in place. Quintix blinds are used to generate high-level desired motions such as swing foot trajectories, the given footstep locations are used as spline knot points. B. In manipulation of the entire body. The operator issues a series of commands during full body manipulation, requesting either direct joint angles for one or both arms or target Cartesian locations for one or both hands. These commands are used to make changes to the desired position. To enforce directly specified joint angles, we use equality constraints in the inverse kinematic formulation. We transition the desired locations through splines starting at the current target and ending at the new target for large Cartesian motions. We use the nudge method described above for precise foot placement for small motions. Single keyboard taps result in small instantaneous changes in the desired inverse kinematic position. We then use PD gains to produce the desired acceleration for the inverse dynamics by comparing the measured and inverse kinematic positions. C. Transverse door control. Door traversal is a simple task for humans, but it is particularly difficult for humanoid robots. Door traversal is divided into four subtasks, door detection, walking to the door, opening the door, and walking through the door. To control the autonomous execution of the process, an event-driven finite state machine with subtasks as states is used, with human validation at critical junctions. The door detection state is where the finite state machine begins. A vision-based approach is used for detection. A state transition occurs when the robot has the normal door and the position of the handle, moving the finite state machine to the walking to the door state. At this point, the robot is moving in a stepping pattern. The finite state machine's third state is opening the door, which has four substates. The first step is to move to the handle. Because of the dimensions of the hand and the handle, the maximum allowable error between the desired and actual hand position is less than 2 cm. The handle is grasped in the second substrate. There is still a lot of space between the handle and the palm when the fingers touch the door, which means the hand would generate an unexpected pulling force on the handle after fully grasping the handle. As a result, when performing a grasp motion, the hand must move forward approximately 4 cm. The third step is to open the door. In this state, our motion planning system generates a sequence of motions such as turning the handle, pulling out the door for a pull door or pushing away the door for a push door, and raising the arm to prevent the door from closing. 
C. Ladder Climbing The underlying controller for ladder climbing is similar to that used for manipulation, but the majority of the motion is scripted ahead of time, with the operator controlling only the final placement of the hands and feet. Each limb's hand or foot is automatically moved to an approximate position by positioning it relative to the other hand or foot. The correct vertical height is determined automatically by using force sensors to detect foot contact and position sense when contact is already known to have occurred. With all of the weight on the toes, the robot is susceptible to rotational slipping, resulting in unexpected yaw rotations. To recover from such rotations by correctly placing the hands on the next rung, we must rotate the inverse kinematic solution to match the measured orientation. As a result, we rotate the inverse kinematic solution regularly so that the feet align with the measured foot orientations, allowing the robot to reorient its upper body towards the ladder and correctly reach targets in the real world. Although continuous updates would have been preferable, periodic updates were easier from a software engineering standpoint. Furthermore, periodic updates are less vulnerable to the chase condition. Abilities in the 2015 DARPA competition of robotics, Atlas was able to complete all eight tasks as follows. Drive a utility vehicle at the site. Travel dismounted across the rubble. Remove debris blocking an entryway. Open a door and enter a building. Climb an industrial ladder and traverse an industrial walkway. Use a tool to break through a concrete panel. Locate and close a valve near a leaking pipe. Connect a fire hose to a standpipe and turn on a valve. Discussion The perception and motion planning algorithms described above can reliably perform the door traversal task in a wide range of unstructured environments. It is planned to speed up the motion planner in the future by reusing previously generated trajectories as initial guesses. Furthermore, because the current motion planner only includes kinematic constraints, the low-level controller must follow the trajectory slowly to avoid dynamic instability. All leg joint level sensing on the Atlas robot is pre-transmission, including positioning, velocity, and torque. This hardware design choice reduces jitter in low-level joint control but causes issues with forwarding kinematics and torque control. Unmeasured stiction degrades torque control performance significantly. To achieve more, better state estimation technology is required. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel.